Welcome back to our tutorial. For today's lesson, we'll be identifying the appropriate rejection region and choosing the correct test statistic when dealing with hypothesis testing. Specifically, we'll explore scenarios where the population variance is assumed to be known or unknown. We'll also solve problems involving tests of hypothesis on the population mean. So let's get started. Let's have a brief recap. When to reject and accept the null hypothesis. Now let's say the level of significance is 5%, so the rejection region is 5%, or 0 0.05 in decimal. The fail to reject region, also known as confidence level, must be 95%, or 0 0.95 in decimal. This means that the probability that an observation will fall in the rejection region is 0 0.05. That is the probability that you will incorrectly reject the null hypothesis. Keep in mind that the rejection region can be at the left tail, of the normal curve, the right tail, or it can be both ends. Now, how do we identify the appropriate test is statistic? So we have the z-test and the t-test. Now, we use the z-test when the population variance or the population standard deviation is known. When the sample size is equal or greater than 30. When n is less than 30, but it is indicated that the population is normally distributed and the population variance or the population standard deviation is known. When the population variance or the population standard deviation is unknown, we use a t-test. We also use a t-test when the sample size is less than 30, when the population is normally or approximately normally distributed. The formula for the z-test is z equals x with a bar on top minus mu all over sigma over square root of n. The t-test is uh, t equals x with a bar on top minus mu s over all over s minus square root of n. So they're pretty much the same except that uh, for the z-test, we have the population deviation, and for the t-test, we have the sample deviation. Now, let's put your understanding to the test. I'll be asking you five questions and try to answer each item correctly. Let's get started. Number one, when, when, you, should use, when should you use the z-test for hypothesis testing? Answer, letter A, when the population variance is known and the sample size is large. Number two, in which scenario is a t-test more appropriate than a z-test? Answer, when the population variance is unknown and the sample size is small. So the answer is letter B. Number three, what is the key factor that influences the choice between the z-test and a t-test? Answer, letter A, the sample size. Number four, under what condition is it generally acceptable to use a z-test instead of a t-test? Answer, letter C, when the sample size is greater than 30. Number five, the sample size is 25, and the population standard deviation is known, which test would be more appropriate for hypothesis testing? Answer, the z-test. Now let's talk about central limit theorem. The central limit theorem is a fundamental concept in the statistics that describes the distribution of sample mean drawn from a population, regardless of the population's original distribution. Why is it important? Well, generally, if random samples with large sample size will be drawn from a not normally distributed population or any distribution with mean and standard deviation, then the sampling distribution of a sample mean will be approximately normally distributed with mean and standard deviation. Now, because of this concept, if the sample size is considered as large, meaning n is greater than 30, 
and the population variance or the population standard deviation is not given, the sample variance can be an estimator for population variance and sample standard deviation S can be an estimator for population standard deviation. Now, the formula is um, Z equals X with a bar on top, that's a sample mean minus the population mean over all over S over square root of N. Now, please take note that this is possible if N is greater than 30. As an estimator, S will replace sigma. Now, let's try to solve some examples to understand this better. Now, for number one, the guidance office personnel of Concepcion Integrated School established that daily, the average number of grade 11 students who commit absenteeism is 11.5. Counseling and strict monitoring were facilitated as an intervention. A sample of 40 students who commit the same offense were tested and resulted an average of 9.85 absences daily and a standard deviation of 4.25. Based on the result, can the guidance office claim that their intervention is effective? Use alpha equals 0.05. So the first step is to formulate the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis can be stated as mu equals 11.5. So meaning after the intervention, it's still the same, 11.5. But the null hypothesis can be stated as less than 11.5, meaning the intervention is effective. Step 2. Identify the appropriate test statistic. Now, since the sample size is greater than 30, we use the z-test. Number 3. Set the level of significance. So, according to the problem, we should use the we should use alpha equals 0.05. Next is to determine if the t-test is one-tailed or two-tailed. Now, to determine which test is one-tailed or two-tailed, we look at the null hypothesis. So, this is pointing to the left, so we know that we should be using the left-tailed test. So it's a one-tailed test. Next, we're going to determine the critical value. Then we'll calculate the test statistic. Then apply the decision rule to determine whether to reject or retain the null hypothesis. Now let's determine the critical value. To determine the critical value, we know that alpha is equal to 0.05, and it's a one-tailed test. To visualize this, uh, let's have the normal curve, and we know that the rejection region is on the left side, so right here. So this line right here is the critical value. It separates the rejection region and the fail to reject region. Now, how do we determine the critical value? We need a t-test table. So from the t-test table, we know it's one tail and uh, alpha is 0.05. So we, from here, we scroll down all the way down to Z and that would give us 1.645. So the critical value is negative 1.645. Why negative? Because it's a left tail test. So it's right here. It's always going to be negative. Next is to calculate the test is statistic. So we are given the population mean, that's 9.85, the population mean, which is 11.5, the standard deviation, which is 4.25, and the sample size is 40. Now using the formula, we plug in the values and that would give us approximately negative 5.06197. The computed value is in the rejection region. Since negative 5.06 is less than negative 1.645, reject the null hypothesis. So meaning the guidance office can claim that their intervention is effective in reducing absenteeism. So next, uh, example number two, the soda factory asserts that every bottle contains one liter of beverage consistently. An inspector uh, sampling 50 bottles discovered a mean volume of 0.98 liters with a standard deviation of 0.1 for six liters. Can we conclude that the soda volume is consistently not one liter? Utilize alpha equals 0.01. So first step is to formulate the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis can be stated as one liter. The alternative is not equal to one liter. So the level of significance is alpha equals 0.01. Now it's a two-tailed test because it can, from the alternative hypothesis, it can be lower 
or higher than one liter. Now to determine the critical value, we need the p-test table. So we know that alpha is 0 0.01. So from here, again, we go all the way down to Z and that will give us 2.576. Now, since it's a two-tailed test, we have uh, the rejection region on the left and rejection region on the right. So right here, it's negative 2.576. And on the right, we have positive 2.576. Next, uh, we need to compute the, we need to calculate the test is statistic. Let us first write the given. So we are given the sample mean, which is 0.98. The population mean is 1. The standard deviation is 0.146. And the sample size is 50. Plugging in all the values, that will give us approximately uh, 0, negative 0 0.37012. Now, it falls within the fail to reject region. So step number five, apply the decision rule to determine whether to reject or retain the null hypothesis. And the computed value uh, falls within the fail to reject region. There's not enough evidence to conclude that the mean volume of the soda differs significantly from the claimed one liter. So fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's have another one. The daily recovery rate of seven randomly selected barangays in Marquina City as a sample mean equals 24.71 and the standard deviation is equal to 13.10. Assuming that the population is approximately normally distributed, test the null hypothesis that the mean of the population is 15.76 is against the alternative hypothesis. Mu is greater than 15.76 at alpha uh, equals 0 0.05. So step one, formulate the null and alternative the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is uh, 15.76 and the alternative hypothesis is greater than 15.76. Now the test is statistic that we're going to use is a t-test because the sample size is less than 30. From the problem, it says we should use the uh, alpha equals 0 0.05. Now to determine if the t-test is one or two-tailed, we look at the alternative hypothesis. So this is pointing to the right, so we know it's a one-tailed test. Uh, uh, right tail test in particular. Next, uh, we'll determine the critical value, calculate the test statistic, and then apply the decision rule to determine whether to reject or retain the null hypothesis. Now, to determine the critical value, we need a t-test table. So from the t-test table, we know it's a one tail test, and uh, well, alpha is equal to 0 0.05. We also need the degree of freedom. To compute the degree of freedom, degree of freedom is equal to n minus 1. So the sample size is 7 minus 1, and that is equal to 6. So the degree of freedom is 6, and they'll meet at 1.9 Three. So the rejection region is 1.943. So right here, it separates the fail to reject region and the reject region. Next is to calculate the test statistic. So we are given the mean, which is a sample mean, which is 24.71. The mean is 15.76. The standard deviation is 13.10. And the sample size is 7. Plugging in all the values, that would give us approximately 1.82. And 1.82 is less than 1.943, so it would fall somewhere here in the uh, fail to reject region. So step five, apply the decision rule to determine whether to reject or retain the null hypothesis. Now, since the computed T value 1.81 is less than 1.9 or three, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the mean of the population is greater than 15.76. Now it's time for the quiz. You may, you may take a screenshot Let's of go. each item and we'll check that later. So that's it for today. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.